One of my friends asked me recently, as an on-air meteorologist, are you allowed to talk about climate change? Because I just don't hear too much about it. Well, we are, we do, but many times it's just a simple presentation. We don't have the chance to dive in deep because of time constraints, but we do here. In California, we've been awakened to yet another horrible fire season. The worst on record, in fact. Much of the talk that's been about the fire season tends to turn political. How about we just talk about the weather then, both in the short term and long term? Where are we? Where have we been? Where are we going? We now have the worst fire season on record in California. Over 4 million acres burned. And the largest wildfire in state history, the August Complex in Mendocino National Forest, has now scorched over 1 million acres. In fact, six of our top 10 largest wildfires in state history happened this year. And we're not done, by the way. We'll need a big rain event to really suppress the available fuels, like grasses. Keep in mind, though, we still have millions of dead trees from our historic drought in 2012 that ran through 2016. So the risk continues nearly year round. When we look at the statistics from CAL FIRE, both year to year and the five year averages, you can see this year is like no other, with nearly 2 million acres above average burn and nearly double the fires we usually see. At the bottom, when we combine the United States Forest Service statistics, we get that over 4 million acres burn. This graphic shows the frightening trend of growing fire danger in California since 1980, and it's true across the entire West. All this as temperatures continue to warm. In California, we just wrapped our water year. Now this runs from October 1st through the following September. The 2019-2020 water year overall was dry. The snowpack was 50% of average as of April 1st. That makes it the 10th smallest snowpack since 1950. The southern part of the state did okay for precipitation, but our largest reservoirs are in the northern part of the state where we fell short of our average precipitation, not to mention the above average temperatures over the water year. It's not all bad news. We still had plenty of reserves because we had a really good water year in 2018, 2019. So we're at about 93% of average for our reservoir storage. This takes a lot of skill though from water managers to make sure they carefully release water through the year to make way for melting snow and preserve enough if we run into another dry year. Right on the heels of that, we headed into the dry summer months, and this one was a record setter for many reasons. August ended up being the hottest on record for many places in California, as you can see in the areas indicated in that dark red, and nearly the entire state with the top 10% warmest on record. Those high temperatures can lead to big evaporation rates. I recently attended a webinar with NIDAS. It's the National Integrated Drought Information System, and in it they talked about evaporation. I get a lot of questions about this actually when we hit those stretches of 100 degree heat. This is one of the experimental drought monitoring tools they are using called the Evaporative Demand Drought Index, or EDI. It is basically looking at the thirst of the atmosphere across a period of time. This tool can offer an early warning of agricultural drought, hydrologic drought, and fire weather risk by showing how the evaporative demand is changing above or below normal. So does one dry year make a drought? Well, it depends on if you're calling it the little d drought or the big d drought. Little d is more just lack of rain. Big D is when we start talking about bigger economic and agricultural impacts. Right now, the northern part of the state is starting to see some extreme drought, but this is more of the short-term little D drought due to lack of rain. It's not that this is to be looked at lightly, though. When we look at the lack of rain, that's just one part of the equation. When we look at the whole year, we consider record heat, the dry conditions both in the Sierra Nevada and the coastal range, plus unusual summer storm activity with lightning, very little rain, and high winds, not to mention the available fuel with both grasses and millions of dead trees from tree mortality in the drought of 2012-2016. It's not too surprising the historic fire season we've had. Now we've had over 4 million acres burned, but that broke the record set back just two years ago in 2018 when we had just a little under 2 million acres burned. So what's next? Well, we are watching a developing La Nina situation in the equatorial Pacific. This is when that area in the Pacific has cooler than average water. 
the opposite of El Nino when there is warmer than average water there. The traditional pattern during this phase of ocean temperatures looks like this during La Nina events. We tend to see drier conditions in Southern California, wetter in Northern California. It's nearly opposite during El Nino years, but again, these are just typical patterns. There isn't a super strong link to precipitation in California due to either of these phases, but it's worth watching. In fact, the Climate Prediction Center is using this as part of their longer range forecasting tool. The outlook for October through December is drier than average across the southern part of the state and much warmer than average across the entire state. For this reason, drought is expected to persist or intensify in parts of the state where drought already exists and for Southern California, drought is expected to develop. In terms of temperatures, you can see from these trends that our fall seasons are getting warmer both in California and throughout the United States. A lot of information there. We're still early in the game as far as what we'll see for this next water year and how drought will either subside or persist or increase. Our wettest months, if you're keeping track, are December, January, and February.